Okay, so I thought that uh, I could make a few videos, like I promised you guys, going over carbon tracing for the different carbons uh, of glycolysis or glucose. So uh, again, to re-summarize before I go into the different carbon tracing problems, and I'll probably have to break this up into two different videos, like one going over these carbons, and then another one going through these carbons. But the, the basic principle of what we're doing here again is we're going through glycolysis, and remember, glycolysis, we go from a glucose molecule to two pyruvate molecules, okay? And we're gonna make NADH and ATP uh, in the process from the NADH and whatnot, and also from ATP. But the idea here is that in this process, we're going from a six carbon molecule to two three carbon molecule intermediates, okay? So this glucose molecule effectively is going to be broken at this carbon, or what is this doing? At this point between carbons three and four, okay? So on pyruvate, if we radio labeled carbon one or carbon six, they're gonna end up on the same carbon of pyruvate, okay? So both carbons one and six, whenever we cleave glucose into those three carbon molecules, they both end up becoming the methyl group on pyruvate. Same thing for carbons two and five. So if we radio labeled instead carbons two and five, those end up becoming our carbonyl group on pyruvate. And then for carbons three and four, uh, maybe I could just circle it so I don't have to keep erasing. Carbons three and four end up becoming the carboxyl group uh, on pyruvate. So again, these numbers are not fractions or anything. It's just saying that carbons one and six end up becoming the methyl group, two and five are the carbonyl, and three and four are the carboxyl group, okay? And I made this chart, it's like a summary from one of your lecture slides. Um, but the idea here is, I know it looks like there's a bunch of different examples from carbon tracing that we have in this class. Uh, it, like there's a, many different ways that uh, the study questions can ask you these type of questions. But the main principle is that there's only really three different, whoops, there's only really three different scenarios where we can trace the carbons because pyruvate itself only has three carbons, so there's only three outcomes we need to uh, look into in terms of carbon tracing from pyruvate in the TCA cycle, okay? So we're gonna go through each of these different examples, okay? But this table that I have over here is basically summarizing what is happening in each of, for each of those carbons. So for carbons three and four, their ultimate face, fate is that 100% of those carbons, they're gonna be lost as CO2 by PDH before entering the TCA cycle. For carbons two and five, 100% will be lost as CO2 by isocitrate dehydrogenase and alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase on your second cycle. And then for carbons one and six, you're gonna get uh, a 50% loss on your third cycle, then an additional 25% loss on your fourth cycle for a total of 75%, then an additional 12.5% loss uh, on the fifth cycle for a total of 87.5% and so on and so forth. So every cycle after the third cycle, you're gonna continue to lose half of your radio label. So it's 50, then 25, then 12.5, and so on and so forth, okay? So I kind of like to think of these as like easy, this is like your easy level, this is like your medium level, and this is like your hard level. Even though none of them are really hard, it's just like this one just keeps on going forever, and carbons three and four, you'll see, it doesn't even enter the CCA cycle. So it's kind of like you're leveling up as you go from car like the carbons three and four to two to five, and then one to six, okay? So again, let's just go again, and go over each example. So for let's just go to case A. Okay? So for case A over here, what we're saying is that we're gonna radio label carbon three or carbon four or both. So if we radio labeled carbon three, okay. Whoops. So if we radio label, let's say we radio label carbon three so that at the end we get our radio label on this carboxyl group, okay? So if we radio label this one, we're gonna get our radio label on the carboxyl group. Um, and what we're gonna do now is we're gonna come and take this pyruvate molecule, and we're just gonna come over here to this TCA cycle drawing, okay? Hope you can see everything, okay? And we're gonna radio label again the carboxyl group right over here. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna try to see where the uh, carbon ends up as we go through PDH and the TCA cycle. Well, if you notice over here on the first step, pyruvate dehydrogenase, remember we said that PDH is this multi-enzyme complex with E1, E2, and E3, and maybe I should make a video uh, going over each of these uh, enzymes. Uh, but the idea here 
is that E1 is your pyruvate decarboxylase. It's decarboxylating your pyruvate. So we're going from this three carbon pyruvate to this two carbon acetyl CoA, or there's technically other stuff going on for the coenzyme A part, but we're just looking at the carbons from glycolysis. We're going from this three carbon thing to this two carbon thing. So what we're effectively doing is we're losing one of these carbons as CO2. Now you're gonna say, well, which carbon is lost? And my key, the key takeaway I want you guys to take away from this is anytime you're radio labeling anything and you're not sure what's happening, you can compare the steps of before to the step of after and uh, see what is being changed around in the molecule. So for example, we're gonna look at this. So we're gonna look at A versus B. So pyruvate versus acetyl-CoA. And this is kind of straightforward, but it's, you can apply this to any of the intermediates in the TCA cycle. So we're gonna look at the left-hand side and notice how we, we see a methyl group followed by a carbonyl. So this tells us that um, these, this side of the molecule is the same across both, so we can start counting our carbons th this way. So we're gonna say, okay, well, this is the same on this one, this is the same on this one. Maybe I should draw it out a little bit larger. So we got this is the same on this one, this is the same on this one. The carbonyl is the same on both. It's actually this third carbon that we're ending up losing um, in this PDH step because remember, we're losing one of the carbons by E1. So the idea here is that this third carbon was oxidized and lost as CO2 by pyruvate dehydrogenase. Okay, so if we radio labeled carbon, this carbon right over here, the carboxyl group, it won't even enter the TCA cycle because we're going to decarboxylate it as we go through PDH and form acetyl CoA. And if you go back to this table, notice how we said that 100% will be lost to CO2 by PDH before entering the TCA cycle, okay? So the idea here is that if you are radio labeling a specific carbon, they have like this common pattern that they go through, okay? I've seen exam questions in the past where she radio labeled, well, you could have had a radio label on carbon, let's say from glucose, we're gonna radio label carbon two and carbon three. So that means that if we go to our pyruvate molecule, we're going to say that, oh yeah, we have the radio labels on both of these. So that means that half of our radio label or the carboxyl group, we know that it's not going to even enter the TCA cycle. So half of it will immediately be lost by PDH before entering the TCA cycle. And then the other half or the, like the carbonyl is going to go into the TCA cycle and you can track its movement. Okay. So this hundred percent here is specific so that if let's say you had 100% of your radio label on the, this group right over here, then you could say that 100% is lost. It doesn't mean, because there's different type of exam questions where she could put different percentages and there are different reactions going on. So don't always say, oh, I have one label here that all of it's gonna leave, okay? So make sure that you're following the specific carbons and seeing where the labels are, okay? And I think in the next video, I'll go over carbon two and five, and in the video after, I'll go through one and six.